Welcome back YouTube. This is Alpine Fabrication and this series is where I try to jam some 37 inch mud tires under my Suzuki Samurai. Well at this stage in the design we got our rear four link all tacked together and we have our front three link also all tacked together. I put together an axle truss in the past video and today it's all about air shocks. I picked up a set of these Fox air shocks. These are Fox 2.0s and they're 16 inches of travel. I've got to figure out how I can even fit these into the Samurai. We're gonna to have to add some shock mounts onto our axles as well as build some shock towers for the frame of the Samurai. We left off our last video by building this axle truss. And before I get started on figuring out how to put these air shocks under here, I need to tidy that up by finishing off some knuckle gussets. Knuckle gussets basically help reinforce these knuckles at the end of each of the axle housing, just to prevent any bending that could occur when you have extra stress and strain from all these bigger components and driving on all the harder trails the Samurai is going to see. Well, I think we're gonna see some challenges with getting these air shocks under the Samurai. They're definitely a little bit bigger than what's probably needed for the Samurai, but that's okay. We're gonna have lots of suspension travel with this. And I think we're really gonna appreciate that on the trail. The first step is gonna be figuring out how we're going to mount these shocks to the axle housing. For all of you that follow along, I think you figured it out by now, we kinda of just have to run with it, figure it out on the fly and get this going. So I'm gonna start by mocking up some brackets for the shock mount. And we're gonna get cutting on the plasma table and really try to see how this shock looks. My next focus is now going to be figuring out the upper frame side of these mounts. So I need to clear out the bit of the engine bay, I got to cut out some more of the fenders. We need to figure out how high these shock mounts need to be coming off of the frame. And we need to figure out the orientation of that shock and how angled we want it to be so that we don't collide with the tire on steering or compression of the suspension. Well I'm pretty excited about this step because getting these shocks in here just gets that build one step further. It looks a little bit more complete. It's starting to look really cool with having those in there. And that's really one of the final steps with articulating the suspension before I have that 100% confidence of welding everything together and putting this on its own weight. Well guys, we're on to another day. I've been getting a little bit frustrated with these frame side air shock mounts. This is what I came up with at the late night session that I was doing previous. Looks more like a sock 
than it looks anything like a mount. So I walked away from this, things were not jiving. I definitely was not in the creative zone and that's definitely fine to happen. We let things sit for a few days. I went to the computer and I just sat down and threw together some ideas. I'm now ready to cut out another test piece on some 16 gauge steel like that sock. And then we're gonna do the test fitting of that new mount, make sure it looks good because one of the biggest constraints that we have here is that the steering arm, so the steering linkage that goes from the actual steering column down to the box, runs right on top of that frame rail. So I made a little bit of a notch in the air shock mount to be able to accommodate that. And then on the passenger side, we have a rad hose that comes right up near there that also comes close to the alternator. So it's a little bit of a tight squeeze to get everything in. I think I found the solution and we just really need to test this and cut it out and make sure it looks good. got this mount in here. It's looking pretty good at a first pass. I did have to take a little nick away on the corner because I was contacting the engine mount. But other than that, this fits in really nicely. So I'm pretty impressed with not doing any cardboard that this came right out of CAD and right onto here. There's a few tweaks I think we're gonna have to make. So one of the clearancing holes for the steering shaft, I gotta drop that down about three quarters of an inch. And then we might run into some issues with how outboard these springs are being mounted. So right now, I don't know if you can see this from this angle, but the heim is actually bottoming out. And that's what I wanna check, because it might not actually be that bottom ball joint in the shock, but it might just be that the end cap of the shock is hitting my metal tab. So what I'm gonna do is grind away a little bit of my metal tab, see if I can get the shock to come inboard another inch, because this needs to drop down and go inboard. If I can't, then I'm gonna have to pull these shock towers out a little bit further to be able to accommodate this at full droop. Well, we got a problem. <laughs> the Heim joints, or the rod ends, the ball joints, whatever you wanna call them, on the end of the air shock, don't have enough flex in them. So between having one side fully stuffed and one side fully drooped, the shock has to have misalignment in either direction. And at either of those extremes, we don't have enough angle in those ball joints to be able to meet the actual flex that we're hoping to get out of these air shocks. So this is kind of a showstopper for me right now. I need to just think on this and I need to figure out a solution of how I want to move forward. All right, now how many of you were sitting there staring at your screen thinking, just turn the mount 90 degrees? I mean, last time I was here, I was struggling thinking that the rod ends on these shocks weren't gonna allow the amount of angle deflection when I have this thing fully drooped out. But then on my drive home, I was thinking, just turn them 90 degrees. Let the clevis mount or whatever it is in these shocks, take up the forward and backwards and not side to side. Gotta get thinking sometimes. Sometimes all it takes is leaving the project and within five minutes you have a eureka moment and all your problems are solved. And I did get a new shop tool, which I think is gonna help with this. So stick around in the video to see what that is. Cause I think it's definitely gonna elevate 
a lot of the products that we build on the Samurai and even has me thinking, maybe going back and rebuilding some of the things I've done already. Well, that shock press is already proving useful. I just made up some air shock axle side mounts. So I put a bend in one of them. The other one is just a straight piece. And these are looking pretty good on the first pass. It's been a little bit of a challenge to try to get this in here and to get it fitted with this axle side mount because I do have to hold the shock up in the proper orientation. So I think the next logical step is, although I think these are good enough, they're in the ballpark, I'm gonna cut out the proper quarter inch piece of the air shock mount because right now, right now I've just got this cut out of 16 gauge sheet metal. So this was great for mocking it up. I need to move this cutout down by an inch, but it looks pretty good on the first pass. So if I get this together and I mount this onto the frame, I can then hang this shock off of the mount that's on the frame and I'll have a lot easier of a time trying to mount this onto the axle side. I do have to figure out my calculations though because I moved this shock mount up by a few inches. So I might have to lengthen this piece by a few inches as well. So I gotta run some numbers quickly and just make sure that I am properly utilizing the stroke of the shock. And then we're gonna be good to go for cutting this thing out of some quarter inch steel.
Would you look at that? We got these air shocks in and they're looking pretty good. One thing I was really shooting for with that frame side mount is to make it look like the air shock was in line with the angle of the mount on the frame. And I think I achieved that for ride height. The actual path of the shock is directly parallel with the angled piece on the mount. I'm also able to close the hood and we have about two inches of clearance there, which gives me enough room to put a crossbar between this side, the driver's side and the passenger side to really stiffen those up from moving around. And I just cycled this whole suspension from full extension down to full compression. And this shock is looking good. We have no contact with the frame. One thing I was a little concerned about with the full travel here, which I think we've been able to avoid is that the pan hard bar is going to come into contact with our steering or with the axle housing itself. If you want to see the video where I built that pan hard bar setup, definitely check out the content here. It's a really good video of me going through learning how to do a pan hard bar like this and building both of these mounts and then being able to cycle that suspension up and down. And as always, if you liked what you saw, I try to push these videos out every two weeks, so make sure you subscribe. And thanks for watching Alpine Fabrication.